Welcome back to Tech by Pike. Today we're going over the benchmarking and gaming results from the Razorblade 18 inch gaming laptop for 2023. Um, the 18 inch gaming laptops um, is new for this year. A number of manufacturers are doing it, uh, including Razor. So uh, we went out and got this laptop and we did an unboxing video and posted that already. And so we've been testing it uh, for the last number of weeks. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing those results to you right now. Uh, this laptop comes with 13th gen Intel i9-13950HX processors, 24 cores, 32 threads, and up to 5.5 gigahertz. Comes with the RTX 4090 with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It comes with a two terabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 6, and then it also comes with this gorgeous 18 inch QHD 2560 by 1600, 240 hertz display, uh, which I'm loving. Um, this laptop is really a beast. Uh, I'm just digging it and I'm really looking forward to bringing the results to you right now. Um, let's get into it. This is the 1080p camera on the Razorblade 18. I did a little testing earlier. The video quality is pretty decent. Um, and when I was typing, the mics did not pick up the keystrokes on the keyboard uh, I'm typing right now, uh, which I thought was fantastic. So overall experience is really, really good. I feel that the Razer Synaptis software that Razer Blade gaming laptops come with has gotten even more robust. I mean, you can go in here, you can tweak the performance of the laptop based on what you're doing as per usual. Uh, CPU, uh, we can, there's a number of performance modes, low, medium, high, and boost. GPU also has the same thing, low, medium, and high, max fan modes. But you can also do some CPU overclocking here. You also, you have to make sure that um, you have the latest BIOS patch, uh, check status of OS features, and certain things you need to do. Uh, before you start uh, tweaking the CPU performance for overclocking, undervolting. Um, you can set profiles, you can connect to different games. Um, you know, if you have Razer peripherals, obviously you can um, set those up in Synapsis here and tweak those as well. Um, really lots of things that you can do within the Razer Synapsis software um, and it gets even more robust over the years um, as they implement more features so um, good on them for doing that I happen to like Razer Synapsis I think they've come a long way and so um, you know uh, oh another thing too here is you can also connect to Chroma Studio and also uh, tweak the backlighting of your keyboard to uh, all sorts of colors, uh, anything you want. And uh, you can add effects and all that. So good stuff, really good stuff. When I first bought the laptop, out of the box, it came with the Realtek R audio. It didn't have the THX spatial audio. I ended up having to go out to the Razer website and I got an email advertising this that if I wanted THX spatial audio, I had to pay an extra 20 bucks without tax. It kind of pissed me off actually a little bit. So anyway, I went ahead and bit the bullet and got the uh, plunk down the 20 bucks. Here is the stereo sound. This is on high. Here's THX spatial audio. Stereo. THX. So I got to be honest with you, I like the THX a lot, lot better. I wish I didn't have to pay an extra 20 bucks without tax for it, uh, but there you have it. We did some testing on the screen with our Spider X Pro, and just remember this screen is a QHD 240 hertz refresh rate screen, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. 
and the max peak brightness is uh, up to 500 nits. We got 100% of sRGB, and then we got 88% of Adobe RGB, and then 99% of P3. Form some synthetic benchmarking using Cinebench R23. Our CPU multi core score was 25,854, and our CPU single core score was 2,065. We performed some synthetic benchmarking leveraging 3D Mark. Uh, we did Time Spy, Fire Strike, a CPU benchmarking, and a storage benchmarking. For Time Spy, we got a graphics score of 21,376 and a CPU score of 12,606 and an online comparison score of 19,356. Fire Strike, we got a graphics score of 41,619, 32,000. Uh, 114 for the physics score and a combined score of 10,894. Our online comparison score was 31,376. I already did that. CPU profile. Here's uh, our scores on max threads all the way down to one thread. And you can see the monitoring here. And then we have a storage benchmark score uh, average for low to Battlefront 5, Call of Duty of Black Ops, um, to Overwatch. We played some of our favorite games to get some average FPS scores. The games were set to high, and the gaming laptop, the Razer, were, was on high settings and set to the dedicated GPU. For Spider-Man Remastered, we got between 100 and 120 FPS on average. Star Wars Battlefront, we were getting 195 to 200 FPS on average. That's fantastic. And then uh, one of our favorites, Hogwarts Legacy, 170 to 175 FPS. Those are really decent scores. Doing some benchmarking, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on ultra settings, and um, I want to check out the fan noise right now. So around 53, 54 decibels, that's not bad. Let's check out the temp of the laptop. And I was reminded in my uh, comment section uh, on another laptop that I didn't go over the WASD keys uh, for gamers. And so that was a huge miss for me. So I'm going to do that now. And right now we're looking at around 33, 34 Celsius over the WASD keys. And then it gets really hot. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, around 42 Celsius, uh, right below this, right between the screen and the keyboard there, where the fans are. Over the GPU and CPU, we're looking at around the yeah, same 41, 40, 41 Celsius. Once again, over at the WASD, 35, 34 Celsius, palm rests. Way cooler, 27, 26 Celsius, so pretty good there. Yeah, and then the trackpad, which you probably won't care about if you're gaming, but uh, around 26 to, if you will, go down further, 24 Celsius. Let's check out the screen here, right where the heat's going up. Yeah, around the mid 40s there. Okay. So we performed some benchmarking using in-game benchmarking tools with some of our uh, favorites, uh, usual suspects, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F1 2020, 
Red Dead Redemption and Horizon Zero Dawn with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the Razor Blade 18 with its i9 13950HX and RTX 4090. We got a max FPS score of 351 and a minimum of 187. And if you notice over here on the Gigabyte, it looks like with the same specs, we got a max of 389 and a minimum of 186. So the max here beat out the max over on the razor blade comparably so interesting uh the f1 2020 we got a max of 255 at a minimum of 168 red dead redemption we got a max of 138 fps and a minimum of 22 and for horizon zero dawn we got a max of 220 244 and a minimum of 45 pretty decent scores that's the results so far we're going to keep this laptop around for a number of weeks and we're going to do some more testing some more benchmarking i think there's more to this laptop um, and i think we've uh, just kind of skim the surface so far. So look forward to those videos and we'll post them as soon as we got more results. I'm loving this laptop. I really am. I, um, I just, uh, the quality of build razor blade puts out is fantastic. Um, and the, um, The features and the overall horsepower uh, of this laptop, I'm really loving it. Anyway, um, this laptop we got on the Best Buy website for close to five grand. I think it was like 4,950 bucks uh, with tax. And that's a lot to plump down for a gaming laptop. Uh, but it has all this real estate. It has a ton of power and uh, it comes with quite a bit of storage as well. So I don't know, there's other manufacturers out there putting 18 inch laptops out with the same type of specs that are less expensive, but I don't know if the quality of build is there. Um, and if that's something that's important to you, uh, you take a look at the razor blade. Anyway, um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this from Tech by Pike, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it, helps the channel. Not only that, gives us an opportunity to bring more videos like this. To you and for that we thank you and stay tuned for more videos about this particular laptop we'll see you in the next one